Hi, I'm Jamie with Scissors and Crayons, and I wanted to answer this question I've gotten recently. What do you do to assess your students when you have a virtual classroom? So we're now about into getting into week five of our school. So I've finished my beginning of year assessments, and I wanna share how I did it and what I'm doing with that information. Um, the reason I assess them, I'm assessing them on a couple of things. So in reading, I'm assessing them in letter names and letter sounds. So it kind of lets me know where I want to place them. And if I know that piece of information, I can put students that don't know their letter names or they know a few, but not very many, or a few sounds, a few names, I put them in one group and we're working on letter names and sounds. Then in another group, if, they, if I find that they know their letter names, they know most of their letter sounds or all of them, I'm putting them in a group and we're working on finishing up all the sounds and starting blending and learning how to blend sound so that they can begin to read. And then in my last group would be maybe those that are already reading, that can read the CVC word and can blend letters together to start reading. After I've assessed them, I'd be working on building fluency and learning some phonics rules to help them become a better reader when they come to words that they do not know. For these students, I might do a DRA or do another assessment that the district may require so that you can determine what level of reading they are at. I did a video recently about Sign Up Genius, which is a great tool to use when you want to schedule your one-on-ones with your students. I scheduled my meetings through Zoom, and so I met with them one-on-one -on -one for about 15 minutes, and I would share my screen and ask them the different questions about the different skills so that I could place them in the correct small group in math and in reading. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link it below and you can be sure to check it out. All right, so let me show you some tools to use for your assessments. So one tool that I really like and my school does pay for is ESGI software. Um, it's great, let me show you that real quick and then I'm gonna show you a different way. If you don't have that or don't wanna spend the money for that, I'm gonna show you a different way to do it too. So if you purchase it and it also has a free trial at the beginning, um, it has preloaded um, assessments, like uppercase letters, lowercase letters, sounds. Basically, I wanna know if they know letters and sounds. That's what I wanna know. That's what I, the quick check I wanna know. Saves it for you and it gives you some really good details on this, so let's look at the details. So say this is my person, this is, they got these ones correct, they missed these, so it lets me see what they got and, and didn't get and it, it records it for me. ESGI has that and then in the math, I do the number identification shapes and then I'm gonna show you what else in a minute. That's an option you can use if you wanna get ESGI. Now, if you don't wanna purchase the SGI, of course you could be on doing your Zoom and you can ask them, okay, what letter is this? What letter is this? What sound does this letter make? I mean, you could do it with your flashcards that you have, you know, or make your flashcards. So another option besides the SGI or using your own flashcards would be using PowerPoint in your Zoom meetings and you would just share your screen and share your PowerPoint. So let me show you what I showed my students. So this is a product I created and it includes several PowerPoint slides for you to go through to assess them online. So say I pull up the alphabet, I would say, okay, Kate, can you tell me the letter sounds that they make? And I would just sw swipe through the slides and she would tell me, duh, oh, and if she didn't know, she could say skip, zzz, and you would just go through it. And then I'll show you the recording form. I'm recording it as I'm assessing her too. So this is one of them. Let me show you another one. Like I said, I'm not gonna just assess them in you know, letter names and sounds. I'm also gonna hit those math so then I can put them in a small math group. So this one, they would be telling me the numbers, identifying the numbers, what number is this, seven. And it starts out with the smaller numbers, you know, one through 10 out of order. And if they get that, then I'm gonna keep going. If they are not getting it, like if, if I can tell they don't know even their numbers one through 10, there's no need for me to really go any further and frustrate them more but it goes all the way to 30. So then it goes into the teens all mixed up and then it goes into the twenties all mixed up. I also ask them to count. Can you count how many tractors there are, how many umbrellas there are and so forth. And then I'm also going to ask them to count as high as they can. So then I can document how high they can. And when they stop, start making those mistakes, I stop of course. And then I also ask them about shapes and I hit, you know, flat shapes, the 2D shapes and the three dimensional shapes. This helps me put them in the correct math group. Um, and I was telling you, I was gonna show you the recording sheet. So like I have Kate, I'm recording what she did in reading. I see that she missed most letters and sounds. So I'm gonna put her in the beginning group where they're learning just letters and sounds. And then in my math, she's missed, you know, she's got some of them. Some she could count okay, but missed eight. She could only count to 22. 
So with the math information, I am able to put them into the small math groups. And so I have them in divided into three groups. So the first group, they're students who can't identify all their numbers to 10 and count aloud to 10 or less. And then my next group are students who can identify numbers to 10 and maybe a few more and they can count maybe to 20 or more. So they're, they're the ones that are kind of like right on track, middle of the road kids. And then I have the other group that the kids can identify most of the numbers to 30. They might miss one or two. Um, they can count. Sometimes they count to 100 or higher. You know, they're the ones that are wanting to be challenged even more. So then it lets me know how fast or slow I need to go for those students when I put them in the math group. That's a lot of information. So let's recap on the things that you should assess for beginning kindergarten. For reading, you wanna do letters and sounds. It gives you your basic information so that you can put them in the appropriate group for their small reading instruction. For math, you want to do uh, number identification. You want to do counting how many something is and also just counting as high as they can. And then shapes, those are your good starting points so that you can put them in the appropriate math, small math groups as well. And then the tools that I said in the presentation are ESGI software, which is a paid service that you can, you can get a free trial to begin with, creating your own PowerPoint, or you can purchase one like mine. There's probably several that you can choose from on Teachers Pay Teachers. I will link mine in the description box below if you're interested. You are use flashcards and just figure out how, if they know by showing it to them through Zoom. I hope that helps and that you're able to get your beginning of year assessments done for kindergarten and get your small groups up and running. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content and information about kindergarten, especially in this virtual learning time.